Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad you decided to join us today. Now, we're in this series called Better This Time Around, and so far, we have talked about the spiritual, the mental, and the emotional areas of life. And last week, we started speaking about a physical area, and we addressed how we think about our physical bodies. And today, I want to continue with the physical side of life, but I want to take it one step further. How we think about our possessions. Now, I use the term possessions quite loosely because there's so much I want to include in the bracket of possessions. And so for the purpose of this message, when I speak about possessions, I mean everything that you consider to be yours. All the stuff you own, all the money you have, even the natural abilities or talents that you've got. In a sense, every resource that you consider to be yours. Now, the reason why I include even your talents is because I think it's often a problem with the way we think about our talents and our abilities that lead to a problem with the way we think about our possessions. We think that our talents were given to us for our benefit and therefore everything else that we acquire as a result of using our talents are by definition, therefore, our benefit. And this way of thinking so often leads to what is known as materialism being driven by what you perceive as the need for material things. Now, we've already spoken about that a few weeks ago. And so all I'll say about it right now is that this time of lockdown is actually a great opportunity to get rid of this way of thinking. Because many people are realizing that our possessions are not all there is to life. That it cannot just be about getting as many physical possessions as possible and enjoying them as much as you can and then die. In fact, the Apostle Paul referred to this mindset and summed it up like this in 1 Corinthians 15. Let's feast and drink for tomorrow we die. And so many people have this attitude. However, his full sentence sounds like this. And if there is no resurrection, let's feast and drink for tomorrow we die. Don't be fooled by those who say such things. In other words, we know there is so much more to life. It's not just about eating and drinking and having the latest gadgets. We know that Jesus died for our sins, that he was resurrected from the dead. We know that he is alive and that he loves us and that he came to give us life to the full. And so to live as though our possessions is the be all and end all of life, to fall into the trap of materialism and consumerism would be short-sighted and extremely foolish. I think we all know this, or hopefully you would have realized it throughout this series. Yet, despite knowing it, we still often fall into the trap of trying to acquire as many things as possible and then holding it as tightly as we possibly can, whether that is money itself or the stuff that money can buy. And the reason we do this is because we think it is ours, because our talents and gifts are ours. And then we live life just for ourselves in the greatest comfort we can muster with the best we can do for ourselves, and we think that our lives are meaningful if we do that, while it is actually just meaningful, or full of me instead of full of real meaning. You see, the real problem is not just how we think about our possessions, but how we think about ourselves and about life itself. If we think that life is all about us, that we are the center of it all, It makes sense that we will do everything possible to do the best we can for ourselves. It makes sense to try and live in as much comfort as possible and only do things that will benefit us as individuals. And if that is your worldview, it's totally rational to always ask before you do anything, what is in it for me? And if the answer is not satisfactory, then you just don't do it. It makes absolute sense to sing along with the Western world's unofficial anthem of I did it my way, if you hold this worldview, that life revolves around you and that everything you have belongs to you because you've earned it. However, I do want to challenge you, especially if you are a Jesus follower, because I think there are a few fallacies in this way of thinking. The first one is what we have discovered so far in the series, and that is that life is not about you. You are not the center of it all. God is. Colossians 1 verse 16. Everything was created through him and for him. History is his story. You play a role in it, definitely. But it's not about you. You are not the main character. 
God is, which leads to the second fallacy at the core of this thinking. And that is to think that you've earned what you have, that you are a self-made man or woman. Friends, if you are inclined to this thinking, let me just ask you, did you choose your parents? Did you choose your DNA? Did you choose your gifts or your talents? Did you choose the environment you were raised in? Did you choose the opportunities that came your way? You may have decided to make the most of what has been given to you, which is absolutely amazing. But friends, in the end, that is your responsibility, as you're the one who will be accountable for your life one day. The point is that you have what you have because God made you the way he did. Yes, but you just don't understand, Yako. I worked very hard to succeed at my business or to do well at school. That is amazing. You know, I'm, I'm sure you did. I'm sure you worked very hard. I just wonder who gave you the ability to work hard? Who gave you the talents that you have? Who gave you the opportunities that you got? Friends, thinking that we are self-made men or women is one of the greatest fallacies of our time. And many people fall into this trap. Without God's grace, we would have nothing and we would be nothing. And if God wanted, he can take it all away in an instant. I think that is one of the things that this lockdown has showed us very clearly. Life can literally change overnight. What was certain one day became utterly uncertain the next. So the question we need to consider is this. How should we think about our possessions, including our money and our talents? So let me make a suggestion of how we should think, and then I'll break it down a bit. Here's a suggestion. Your possessions have been entrusted to you to honor God and benefit others. So we've already spoken about the first bit, the your possessions part, and I hope you realize that it is not really yours. If it wasn't for God, you would not have anything. And it can be taken away in a heartbeat. However, it was entrusted to you for a reason. Every single one of you listening to this message has got some talents. They are probably not the same as that of the person sitting next to you, but you are all good at something. Romans 12 verse 6, God has given each of us the ability to do certain things well. There are some things that you are just really good at. You know, one of my three standard questions whenever I start pastoral coaching with anyone is, what are you good at? And what I find absolutely fascinating is that most people falter when I ask them this question. It's like they didn't expect it and I don't know what to say because either they don't know or they've never thought about it or they just feel that it would sound boastful if they told me what they are good at. However, as we've just spoken about it, you can no more be boastful about your talents than you can be boastful about a rented car because it's not really yours. It's just been entrusted to you. However, for some reason, God entrusted certain talents to you. And so before I continue, let me just ask you this question. What are you good at? Friends, it's really important for you to think about this and maybe write down what you're good at. And if you're not sure, speak to some people who know you very well and spend some time on this. Because you see, there's a reason God gave you the talents and the abilities that you've got. And often when you know what they are and you take a good look at them, you will find that they point to your purpose in life. In Hebrews 13 verse 21, we read, God will equip you with all you need for doing his will. Notice that it doesn't say that God will equip you with all the abilities you want, abilities that other people might have. No, he gave you exactly what you need for the purpose he has for your life. And therefore he wants you to focus on that and develop those gifts and make the most of them. Jesus told a wonderful story about this in Matthew 25. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But a man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. 
The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. Friends, the point of this parable is that we should use whatever has been given to us and make the most of it. Some get loads of talents. Others get only a few. But we all receive certain abilities and talents and we need to make the most of it because it was entrusted to us. We are stewards of God's resources. This means that your possessions, your talents and your finances belongs to God. And He put it under your management for a while. And He wants you to make the most of it. It still belongs to Him, though. And one day you will be accountable to Him for the way you used what was entrusted to you. Friends, some of you have been entrusted with some amazing abilities. Things that just come naturally to you. You may be a gifted athlete or wonderful musician, or you are just great with your hands, whether that is fixing something or creating art. Others of you are brilliant at making money. You just have a great business sense. Whatever it may be, those talents come from God. And it was entrusted to you for a reason. In Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 we read, Remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. It's important for us to remember where our abilities came from and who it actually belongs to. Friends, whatever you have is not really yours. It was loaned to you and you will not take it with you when you die. So hold it lightly. You came into this world with nothing and you will leave with nothing. Life is all about God, not you. And therefore we should use whatever has been entrusted to us to honour God. Again, we need to remember who it is all about. In Galatians 3 verse 23 to 24, we read this. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. I said it before and I will say it again. Your relationship with God is not just where we need to start if we want to do things better this time around. It needs to be at the core of every part of our lives, including how we think about our possessions. And therefore, it doesn't matter what talents you've received. You should always strive to honor God with them. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31. Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Any talent can be used for God's glory. Carpentry is as important as teaching, and managing is as important as music. There are no unimportant abilities. God gave all these talents, and therefore they are all important to Him. It means that you can honor God by repairing cars, or by balancing books, or by making meals or managing your office. Whatever you do, you can do it all for God's honor and glory. And the way you do it is to give it your absolute best to develop it as much as you can like the guy with the five bags of gold in jesus parable it also means that you give glory to god for what he entrusted to you if you use your talents well you will definitely also benefit from it and whatever you get as a result of it you should also use to honor god proverbs 3 verse 9 to 10 honor the lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce by the way That was the reason for the tithe, the habit of giving the first 10% of any earnings to God. Just listen to this in the Deuteronomy. Bring this tithe to the designated place of worship, the place the Lord your God chooses for His name to be honored, and eat it there in His presence. 
This applies to your tithes of grain, new wine, olive oil, and the firstborn miles of your flocks and herds. Doing this will teach you always to fear the Lord your God. The reason for the tithe is to teach people to fear the Lord, to learn to put Him first. So by giving Him the first 10% of your income, before you pay anything else or spend it on anything else, you learn to put God first. Friends, let me make it very clear, because people are sometimes very touchy when you mention money per se. God doesn't need you, and He doesn't need your money. It's the other way around. You need God. And if it wasn't for Him, you wouldn't have any money, or talents, or possessions. Did you hear that? It's quite important that you grasp this. Because there are often so many misunderstandings when it comes to the habit of the tithe or any percentage giving. But it's actually quite simple. Everything belongs to God. 100%. Because He is the Creator. And He can give it to whom He wants. And He can take it away if He wanted to. What He desires, though, is that you will put Him first in your whole life and that you will honor Him. And the way to show this is by giving him the first part, whatever that percentage may be, of whatever you get. And that is a way to honor him and remind yourself that everything you have actually belongs to him. Because you belong to him. Another important way to honor God is to remember that your talents were not entrusted to you for only your benefit. It was entrusted to you so that others may benefit from it. 1 Peter 4 verse 10, God has given each of you some special abilities. Be sure to use them to help each other, passing on to others God's many kinds of blessings. You are supposed to help others with what has been entrusted to you. You are called to be a channel of God's blessings to other people. Not try and store it all up for yourself. In 1 Corinthians 12, the Apostle Paul speaks about the church and the various gifts people in the church receive from the Holy Spirit. And then he says in verse 7, A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. We receive spiritual gifts and talents and other resources as well so that we could help others, so that they can benefit from it. Friends, the purpose of your possessions is not to be possessed by it, but to use it to honor God by helping others. You are called to use it to build His kingdom, to reach out to people in need and to make a positive difference with what God has entrusted to you. Whether that be the talents you have, the money you receive because of using your talents or the stuff you acquired by spending that money. In the end, all those possessions belong to God because you belong to Him. And therefore remember, Your possessions have been entrusted to you to honor God and benefit others. If you do this, you will truly do things better this time around. Amen. Dear thank you so much for everything you placed under our care. Thank you for all the resources, all the talents, all the gifts, all the abilities you entrusted to us. Please help us to be good stewards, to always honor you and to help others with the possessions you loaned to us. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Please receive God's blessing and go and honor God and help others with what he entrusted to you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.